Hello, good day, everybody. Um, Mark Stevens, uh, CEO and founder of Smart Recruit Online and Corporate Wellness and Mental Health UK. Um, today, I have a special guest with me, uh, John Earls, uh, who will be talking to us about mindfulness and yoga. Quite a unique combination and um, very intriguing. I've had some very interesting conversations with John over the last couple of weeks. So uh, really looking forward to talking and delving deeper into this subject with him today. Uh, hi, John. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, nice to be here. Great. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today. Um, now look, we, we've had the opportunity to have a few conversations. Um, perhaps uh, best way to kick off today, um, perhaps you could talk us through how you moved from the corporate world and what attracted you to move across into, you know, the world of wellness, mindfulness and yoga. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I started off my my existence as a um, as a lawyer. I was working in in law for many years, uh, litigation, um, which was quite adversarial, high pressured, and I mean I was successful uh, and I enjoyed it. Um, but many years of that sort of environment, high pressure, meeting targets. Um, having to, to manage staff and, you know, work long hours um, not looking after myself. I think it, it, took, it took its toll on me. So after, after a few years, I was, I was getting to the, play, the point where I was not functioning as, you know, very well, you know, physically or mentally. I was, you know, I was tired. I was, um, I was at a place really where I was, I was starting to be, to be burned out. Mm. Although I'd never really heard of the term burnout. Um, but you know, somebody somebody did say that you're, you you seem like you're highly stressed. You, you might want to take some time off. Um, but I didn't. You know, it, lawyers don't really think of things in that way. You know, weakness is seen to be people who are sick or and all the rest of it. And it's that sort of environment. So I, I, I ploughed on, and then I, I opened my own business, which again, which again was in litigation. So I, I had a debt recovery finance company, litigated a lot um, and again, very successful, but I didn't listen to the signs when I was uh, in law and I, I did have a full on episode where I just crashed. So um, it was my it was my then wife um, who suggested, why don't you try a bit of mindfulness? <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was a bit of a game changer. I must admit, I, I'm not going to say to you that I wanted to do it. I'm not going to say that I was very open to it. I was. I remember my words correctly. They were quite um, quite rude, I think, to her. But um, but no, she was right, and I uh, tried it, and it really helped. Well, you know, it's not an uncommon story. You know, um, you know, we had this conversation earlier, didn't we, about how many people it's affecting, and uh, and I'm sure, in, given the current environment as well, with the pressures of COVID on business owners and people in high-profile positions, um, how, how's that affected your work right now in terms of you know what you're doing with mindfulness? Has, has that increased your workload? Well, yeah, I mean, I'll talk a little bit about you know what what I'm doing um, at the moment, which is quite interesting, and you know the, the journey that's taken me from from law into into mindfulness and uh, and yoga, but yeah, you, you're quite right. The the current COVID situation is um, uh, has pushed me very much um, towards working with with a large number of companies. So I've always been focused on working with companies and helping individuals and teams. Um, but yeah, this COVID situation has opened up the marketplace massively. You know, I think that people really need it. They they, they need a method of, of uh, to reduce stress, to, to help people cope with change. I think change is the biggest thing. That, you know, people don't like what's going on at the moment because it's very uncertain, you know, the nature of people's jobs and the future. And mindfulness is, it is so good for that because it, it, it's all about acceptance and how, how you can embrace change and face your fears and these sorts of things. Um, so, yes, I'm, I'm getting an overwhelming amount of um, uh, inquiries for, you know, for, for my services. Um, you know, circling back a little bit to my own story, um, mindfulness particularly um, helped me because it, 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 went, it, it took me from that place of being um, stressed and burned out and it helped move me into a place where I felt like I, I could cope again. And I think a lot of people, you know, at the moment are stuck at home are in that situation. They feel like they can't cope. 
you know, they're at home, so they're maybe working more than they would do in, in the workplace, or maybe feeling the pressure because you can't get away from the work because you're at home. So the yeah, it's it's, it's definitely increasing pressure for people, stress is more, uh, and things like mindfulness, uh, yoga, stuff that's going to help people, but also give people the ability to help themselves it is becoming massively important. So, um, so it's a pleasure to be able to, you know, to, to talk to, to your listeners about this, because I think it's going to help them as well, which is the exciting thing. Well, I guess most people are familiar with yoga, um, but is mindfulness something that's easy to summarise and explain? Mindfulness, yeah. Um, I would say, I would sort of summarise mindfulness in three ways. Mindfulness is about being present. It's about acceptance, and it's about non-judgment. And all three of those statements can be broken down into a whole, well, a whole webinar in itself about what that means, or maybe even not a whole course in itself, but. To break it down into just simple terms, to be present means to be present. It doesn't mean to focus on the flowers outside and look at them. It means to fully be immersed in that moment where you're experiencing nature in its full beauty. You're not thinking about anything else, past or present, that you're completely absorbed in the beauty before your eyes. And that's quite a hard thing to do. I mean, if you even if you asked yourself how many times in a day could you actually say you fully were there without being distracted by anything, you know, without being distracted by your body, your mind, emotions, anything at all. So that's the, the first thing. You know, acceptance is a hard thing. It's well, it's not hard. Acceptance is easy. But I think in our minds, it's hard. Do we accept change? Do we embrace fear? Do, 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 we, do, we, do we want to do things that maybe we maybe we don't want to do that are outside of our routine if someone comes up to you and says something to you and it really like spikes your your emotions makes you angry you know is that something that you're willingly going to accept and go you know what i'm going to roll with this just i'm going to be happily going along with these feelings we resist it a lot so mm. and then non-judgment looking at not judging ourselves you know not being hard on ourselves that critical voice in each and every one of us that says, you can't do it, John, you're not going to succeed. So for me, mindfulness is broken down into those three distinct areas. Mm. And people need coaching, do they, to, to um, work out the way to do this again, you know, because we are, we are so absorbed in our little bubbles, aren't we? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think people do, you know, the, the the leaders that inspire me, you know, are people like, well, the typical leaders, you know, t Tony Robbins, these sorts of characters, inspirational, motivational coaches, they they embody for me mindfulness, you know, they're about being present with themselves, they're about being positive and happy, you know, and I think they're also very present, you, you know, when you, when you when you get before some of these great people, they... Um, they're, they're very present they're very present with themselves and with you you can feel that mm. um, and yet just that that's something that can be coached and i think the skills that they've got and um, uh they can coach into other people and the same with mindfulness mindfulness is a little bit more about how do we deal with stress how do we deal with anxiety worries how do we deal with physical pain so my, mindfulness is maybe not less of the um inspirational but it still touches on those those same things you know in terms of embracing ourselves and being positive and definitely they can, those things can be coached 100 percent great well looking forward to uh you going taking us through some of your yeah. and insights yeah so i'll um i'll just go through now um let's take you through to the first slide here so workplace stress so we talked a little bit before about um my journey from stress burnout um, and introducing mindfulness um, well it's not surprising that workplace stress sickness from workplace stress burnout these sorts of things are massive the the international labor organization estimates around about 30 percent of all work-related disorders are due to burnout burnout in case you don't know burnout is the end of the stress uh, spectrum so it's not a condition by itself. It's just the end of stress. It's where you physically, emotionally, 
and um, well, some people call this spiritually, I would say more like uh, individually disconnect. You mm. can't function. So that's what that means. And if you think about, th- imagine thirty percent of the workplace just dropping down and going, you know, what, I can't work. I mean, that that accounts for billions, billions, you know, and um, practices like mindfulness can massively impact that. And there's been a lot of research that's gone into showing how um, how that can that, that can be applied and how effective it is. So my story was 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 one of many, I think, that my my ex wife then introduced me to mindfulness. I started practicing. I uh, used a Headspace app, um, which is lovely, and very ge- very generic those the, those meditations. But they're a great great place to start. And I noticed, you know, I was getting less stressed. Okay, it didn't transform me overnight. There was a lot more work that went into it, but. I went from being, you know, what I'm absolutely on the edge here to being, all right, yeah, I'm still pretty, pretty bad, but I'm feeling a lot less stressed and feeling a lot more like I can cope with my emotions. That was a big difference, mm. um, you know. And mindfulness and yoga um, as a combination is something that that I'm going to touch on um, next, um, because mindfulness is very, very good at reducing certain types of stress. It's very good at increasing certain um, facets like attention and resiliency. But it's not good at everything. I mean, if it was, I mean, everyone would just be doing mindfulness and we'd all be fine, wouldn't we? But mindfulness is a very good tool. But mm. yoga touches on other things that mindfulness doesn't. And that's what a little bit of this presentation is about, is how does mindfulness and yoga combine? And why does it combine? Because I found that doing mindfulness by itself was good and helped but as I said it didn't get me to that place of eureka wow you know I'm starting to feel you know transformed here it was only until I introduced yoga again a suggestion of my ex-wife um that I that I embraced yoga and yoga was um I I didn't want to embrace it I said embrace I didn't I resisted it I laughed at her said it's not going to be any good and then I did it and, <laughs> and it was it was great and it had a great effect so um yeah, so that's what I'm going to talk about in some of these these other slides. Yeah, I think yoga is really in vogue. You know, certainly a lot of younger people may laugh and joke about it, but you know, certainly as we've grown older and we we've, we've gone through our hedonistic days, um, and more of the people of, that are my age in particular are going off on yoga retreats and using that as a method of recharging their batteries. And uh, yeah, so I would recommend it to people go and try it. Yeah, great. Yeah, so. Let's move to this next one, stress and burnout. So you've got mental health and it's characterised by different different criteria. And I won't dwell on it because I know that people don't necessarily want to have a a lecture on the academia behind stress and burnout and how it's characterised and all the rest of it. But I think it's important to to know that, that stress, there's no definition for it. The stress could, I mean, anyone can say stress. It can mean many things to many people. Um, but one thing is known and one thing that is measured or is able to be measured is stress physically in the body is a result or can be the result of mental stress. And that can be measured. And when you have physical stress in the body and you have mental stress, that's when people start to break down. So there's more and more research out there that shows physical stress, mental stress, when it combines, pushes you quicker into things like burnout, breakdown, these big terms that people don't want to get towards. Maslach and Jackson are the leading authority in burnout. Um, They've done a lot of research over many decades. They characterise burnout as emotional exhaustion, depersonalisation, and a sense of a reduced sense of personal accomplishment. Emotional exhaustion, we can all rec- recognize that. Someone calls you up on the phone and asks you a simple question, and you go berserk. You know, you you over you go over the top. Depersonalization, you lose sense of who you are. You just don't know who you are anymore. You know, you're walking around, you're thinking, you know what, I don't want to go to work, I don't want to go home. You know, I've just lost it. And reduced sense of personal achievement, actually. What's the point? What is the point of going to my job? I don't care about money anymore. I just want this all to stop. So there are three characterizations 
and yoga and mindfulness can help specifically yoga is very good at that physical stress element where mindfulness isn't okay so i'm just going to move to this next slide here so mindfulness and yoga for business that's that's the experience that i had mindfulness was great and it really helped but mindfulness was not enough my ex uh, wife suggested doing yoga and when i did that in combination with mindfulness it was a tremendous effect so much so that i would say that the combination of the two got me to the place that i was able to go back to work it probably wasn't quite fixed let's say there were still other things that i needed to do you know i needed to change patterns of working and, you know a different approach to, to to my work but there was a dramatic effect and going back to that physical stress slide that we were on last uh, a moment ago it was the physical stress that was being released that was helping the mindfulness mindfulness is defined as a conscious state that arises through deliberately paying attention in the present moment non-judgmentally we talked about that earlier Hatha yoga, which is what we practice in the mindfulness and yoga program, um, is a technique that involves physical postures, which most people understand, you know, asanas, stretching down with dog, those sorts of things. Breathing techniques, pranayama, deep forms of breath, using your diaphragm and a type of mi mindfulness, which is like movement to mindfulness. They call this like a dhyana, which is a Sanskrit term. But so. The combination of a specific type of yoga, not just any yoga, a specific type of yoga and mindfulness, where you're focusing on those elements that John Kabat-Zinn has mentioned and that is present in Hatha Yoga, has been proven and shown many times that it is massively effective for reducing stress, more so than if you were to do just yoga, more so than if you were to do just mindfulness. The combination together is dramatic. You're running these classes, I guess, inside people's businesses. Yeah, that's right. There's a picture there of me doing some some yoga just in the bottom right hand corner. But you know, it just people get put off by yoga because they go, oh, you know what? I don't want a physical thing. I want to sit down. I'm, you know, I'm in my mind a lot. I'm behind my, behind my computer. Maybe I'm overweight or I've got some um, pains or whatever it is. Whatever people's hangs hangs up are, and they think I don't want to do yoga. But yoga is can be done on the chair. Yoga can be done without any movement at all. You could focus on the asanas, yes, or you could focus on the different types of breathing techniques or gentle movement in your chair with a little mindfulness. So it can be very, very gentle, very restorative. Um, the picture that I've got there is what you typically would expect, people out of the chairs stretching and moving and stuff. But um, yeah, when we go to an office, that's the first thing that I do. Is break down that uh, that conception that it doesn't have to be like that often people if they've already invited me in, into the office um you know would want me to do something like that and it's interesting you know i don't go to people's offices now so we're doing online and they're loving it absolutely loving it because people are wanting to move they want to have a break from the computer and they love the fact that everybody's all together and they're all doing something you know physical um yeah it's, it's been great at the moment and these these classes um, two days time we're doing a yoga and mindfulness so it's going to be a physical one uh, to 600 employees 600 employees all at one time can you imagine that <laughs> rock star status oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and what about for, for people that are watching today are we going to be able to give them some access to some of the video content perhaps uh, that we can send them afterwards as well yeah, yeah right. I can do that yeah 100 percent as we move on I'll just skip through this um, this slide if you don't mind, um, because it brings me very very well to your your point. Um, there's a few physical exercises that I would like us to do. Um, so there's a couple in this slide that I think are very very useful, um, and people can can practice this by themselves, uh, you know, independent of this this uh, this interview. Um, and this is one of them. Stop. So it's an acronym. Those letters mean something. Let's break it down. Stop means physically stop what you're doing. So anybody who's watching, and myself and uh, you might could potentially do this as well. I just want you to stop for a second, physically moving, physically doing anything, and just take 30 seconds 
just a pause. You know, even in a few seconds, if you are stressed, you know, you're, you're tired, your eyes will start to close or want to close. At that moment, take a few breaths. <sighs> nice deep breaths. Hmm. And just become aware of how you're feeling. You, know, you might be feeling a bit sad or happy or <sighs> tired. And then we're going to return to our task. So proceed. John, I need you. To, oh, sorry, we've come back to it. So say that again, Mark. Yeah, sorry. Somebody's trying to get through to me. <laughs> it's spoiled the moment. It's the problem with Teams. Team, you can't switch it off. And if somebody else is trying to call you through Teams, you know, it can keep coming through. <laughs> so I do apologise for that. I spoiled it for anybody. <laughs> No, not at all, because no, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting point, you know, because the idea of this is not to just completely stop, but it is to proceed with whatever you're doing. So if you, were, you had a call come in, you're more likely to be able to deal with that call in a more focused and relaxed way. So great. I mean, obviously, I don't want you to take the call now because we're chatting, but um, but yeah, but normally, yeah, go get on with it. Oh, take 30 seconds, 60 seconds. It will make a big difference if you've got a call to make, we've got a big presentation. Um, See, it sounds simple, and it is, but it's very effective. Um, well, it's funny because, you know, I, I've been using some of these sleep apps myself because I think sleep for me is one of the big issues. If I don't get a decent night's sleep, if my sleep's interrupted, you know, I can feel really tired and dysfunctional the next day. So um, I've been using some of these mind apps and starting to do a little bit of meditation exercises, breathing and stuff. And I'm just finding it so helpful. Of course, I don't need to take medication then. I can do that, you know, with, you know, or, or, you know a hot drink or something like that and pretty much get off to sleep in most most occasions. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. And this slide here happens. I won't dwell on this one. Not because it's not important, but just because I want to do one more practical exercise. But um, uh, yeah, sleep is massively important in terms of our mental health, in terms of our emotional state, you know. Um, so someone someone who said to me once, you know, I, I feel quite stressed at work, I feel quite sad, I feel quite angry, you know, could you help me with my anger? And I was like, how do you sleep? And they're like, what do you mean? I mean, how much sleep? How I don't have time for much sleep. I had to do this, that, and the other, and I went to bed at whatever time it was, and I got to go. But, and I was like, well, okay. Before you even do anything, any mindfulness, any practice at all, why don't you just go to bed half an hour earlier? It doesn't have to be a lot, just half an hour earlier, and see what a difference it makes. Over the next week, they did that, and they came back to me, and they were like, you know what, John, that's made a huge difference. Okay, again, it hasn't changed their lives, but it made a big difference in the sense that they were feeling less tired, less aggressive. You know, their their um, uh, their attention was better. They weren't getting frustrated as much. Um, so yeah, happiness is massively important to our mental health. But one of the ways we can affect that is, like you said, great point. Sleep massively important. Mindfulness will help with sleep. Um, you know, and yoga, because they're reducing your stress physically in the body and allowing your mind, the body to relax. So the chances of you uh, feeling less stressed and going to sleep better um, after doing yoga and mindfulness will, 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 be, will be increased. OK, so I'm just going to move past this slide again. It's just some information if people are interested about some of the research that's gone into yoga and um, uh, what they've said. Uh, but it's just reiterating the fact that yoga breaks down stress in the body so mindfulness is great for the mind but what about the stress in the body well yoga as a um uh, as a medium then focuses on that release of stress but i want to pause here if that's okay mark just to go through a few yoga exercises okay do i need to go put my shorts on <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not sure i'm ready for that um but you know you don't need to either um this is just one um this is just simple exercise that I always suggest people to do if they're sitting in a chair. I know that you are because we were chatting before and uh, uh, I'm sitting in a chair. So 
Okay, just sit on your chair so that your back is about uh, against your backrest, so that you're supported. You don't have to be completely flat against the backrest, but you've got your hips back, shoulders back, and you're sitting up as tall as possible. So when I say as tall as possible, your back is straight, so your chest is open. Chest is open because you're pulling your shoulders back. Okay, so you should have your feet on the floor, feet flat on the floor. And this is important, this first step, because often people are not sitting ergonom in an ergonomically correct way. You should all be able to place your hand, your feet on the floor, sorry. You should be able to get yeah, your hips back to the backrest relatively comfortably. Your legs should be at a 90 degree angle. So yoga is a lot about alignment of the body. So it's a nice, nice first step, just get yourself in that position. If you can't, you probably need to change the chair or the or the way that the chair is set up. That can make a big difference for mm. relaxing the body. Okay, so that's our first step. Just, so you just get yourself sat up. Yeah, well, already I can feel uh, a little bit of my lower back pain going. Um, you know, that's just subsided by sitting in a better posture. Yeah, good, good. This um, this particular exercise, we're just going to do one. Um, it's going to be quite strong for some people if they haven't done it before, but it's not a strong exercise. It's just if we do hold a lot of tension in our shoulders, you might find this strong. All I want you to do is just take your right arm up in the air, keep it straight, and keep going and going and going until your elbow is level with your ear. And try not to get your belly pushing forward so your back doesn't want to start to hurt your lower back. You want to keep it in the same position. And just see if you can get your hand up into that position. Okay, relax it down. Try the other side. So the same thing. So you're straightening your left arm nice and straight, all the way up, all the way up. Remember, be careful of the back here. Often people are too tight and start pushing through the lower back. So just be aware if your back is tight. It hurts. Maybe just drop the hand down a little bit. Okay, relax the arm down. And I take both arms up. So do both arms at the same time, nice and straight. Now this time it might feel a little bit all heavy on the lower back, so maybe don't go up as high as it does. Maybe your back should still be supported. Feet sat down, flat on the floor. Ah, and relax. Okay, that's a simple exercise that can make a big difference, you know, in the workplace. If you're sat at home in COVID-19, the first one, just a simple awareness exercise in sitting in the correct posture. Second one is a great one for engaging your core. So to sit in that position with your arms up, you need to engage your stomach and your core. Taking your arms above you is stretching your shoulders, stretching your neck. So you're getting your physical release, you're engaging your body, you're working your core, which is great, and you're becoming more aware of your posture. How great is that? And that took us, what, a minute or two? Mm. Simple stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I think that's why things like this become very popular, you know, because it can be done very easily online, very effective. Very, Without very taking you out of your momentum, when you do your classes, do people tend to be able to sort of go away and repeat the exercises themselves in their own time? Because I know when I did my Pilates classes, you know, for my back, um, you know, I only really went to three or four classes, but I still use all those Pilates exercises in my stretching now. Yeah, and that's, that's, the, that's the idea, is that people work with me because they're going to have a lot of these things that they can take away. So the programs are designed in that way that they you know, give you simple and effective techniques that as long as you, you know, you remember them, they're going to have a lovely effect on your, your body and hopefully will make you feel great in the workplace as well. So yeah, definitely. And we've reached the end mark. That's who I am. And right. well, yeah. Chris, I've got a quick question for you, John, if I don't mind, because, you know, I know that you're doing your PhD in mindfulness and yoga. How far are you into that? How are you finding it? Anything you can share with us? Yes, yeah, 100%. So um, I finished a master's in psychology and mindfulness recently. Um, and part of that research was all about how mindfulness and yoga can reduce stress in the, in the workplace. Some of that was aimed at certain demographics like yoga um, and mindfulness uh, in a corporate workplace rather than in like uh, caring and things like the NHS. Um, it was also focused on lawyers. So I've done a lot of uh, research into how mindfulness can affect lawyers, mindfulness yoga. So I developed a specific program for them. 
Um, and I've taken that research into PhD. So I, I, one of my proposals as part of the, the master's was to investigate this further. And I, I put that proposal over to, to Warwick University um, and that's been accepted now. So I'm due to, due to start um, more of that research in September. Um, so we're hoping to work because of COVID, we're hoping to work a lot more remotely than, than we did um, and we plan to do. And um, so we're going to see how effective mindfulness and yoga uh, for stress is uh, in a remote setting like online, as opposed to in person, because my research was all both based around being in person, but that's all changed now. Yeah, so as that research comes out, I'll be publishing that and um, hopefully working with more and more people to develop that programme. I, I see that as being as a national thing that people start to use. They recognise that if we're, we're going to help people at work, one, we need to do mindfulness, but we also do need to do mindfulness and yoga for, for stress because it, it's a preventative tool. So it will stop you getting stressed, but it, it also will help you if you are stressed. So um, my vision is to have mindfulness and yoga classes or courses or whatever you want to have um, throughout the country. Every company has um, access to, to that type of practice or they're doing it themselves, a version of it. Um, I know that we've got a lot of mindfulness courses and stuff going on uh, and sometimes people have got wellness offices and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I do think that, that it's more, more is needed to be done when it comes to yoga and mindfulness and specifically. <laughs> Well, it's intriguing. And, and, and how can our listeners get in touch with you? How can they find out more information? Um, what's the web address for, to send them to? Yeah, so if they want to catch me, um, the website is www.satis.org.uk. Um, and then my email address is on the presentation. It's john at satis.org.uk. Uh, that's probably the best way to reach me. Um, I do have um, you know, some videos online um, and there's a few articles that I'm writing. So people who are using LinkedIn and um, just look me up, John Earls, um, you should find me quite easily uh, there. All my articles are, um, are often being published on, on, on LinkedIn. Um, or you can contact me through, through Warwick University, try and um, you know, search for me there if you haven't had any, any other look. I'm guessing that there might be one or two sort of uh, people in the HR departments watching this today, thinking about how they might, uh, you know, bring this into their workplace. Uh, I'm get, I guess you're happy to have an initial consultation with anybody that contacts you. Um, yeah, to talk I mean, about how that might work. I think at the moment, I mean, I say at the moment, it would wouldn't change even if it wasn't at the moment. But even more so at the moment, um, that con consultation is free. And I say consultation, it's more of a I'll set up a session for these people, I'll go into a workplace and do some yoga and mindfulness and, and get people feeling good. I won't charge for it, you know, and I think that once people realise, you know, this is great and my staff enjoy it and we can all participate in this and this can be something that, what well, one is relatively low cost and also two is, is highly beneficial and enjoyable, then, then people will want to work with me. But yeah, 100%, if it's somebody who just wants to, you know, set up a nice session, I'm happy to do that. Great. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. John, thank you ever so much for that insightful session. Really enjoyed that. Um, and I'm going to look forward to picking up one or two of your videos myself and having a look at those. Um, so, yeah, we have the website there. We'll follow up with a copy of the slideshow and I'll have a chat with John afterwards and see what else we'll attach into that as well. Um, so that uh, uh, there'll probably be a video link in there and uh, links to maybe one or two of John's articles. John's also been providing us with some content for our own uh, wellness group as well on LinkedIn. So we'll put a link on there to sign up to that because hopefully John will become a regular contributor to that. <laughs> Great. Well, so thanks, John. Thanks uh, for joining us today, everybody. And uh, yeah, look forward to speaking to you all again soon. Bye.